and welcome back to another episode of the Linux Guy. Today I'm going to talk about the programs that I use in Linux. One of the big things that's an issue for people switching over to Linux is the software. I'm going to make a claim that Linux will probably do just about everything that you want it to do that you have done in other operating systems and I will say that the software that you will use that will accomplish these things will almost always not cost you money. But there is a price that you have to pay. That price is the learning curve. So the software that you use in Windows or on your Mac are probably not going to transfer over to Linux every time. Now some of them will. There's web browsers and I'll show you my web browsers right now and most major web browsers available for Linux. So here you can see I have Brave, I have Chromium. Google Chrome is also available but I don't use it. I've got the Decenter web browser. I've got Opera. I've got Gnome Web which is actually only available in Linux and is one of my favorite browsers. I've got Firefox. I also have Ephemeral, which probably should go in there too. Throw that, throw that in there. Ephemeral is a private web browser that's based on the GNOME web project. It's totally incognito all the time. Ephemeral does cost money though. You can get it on Pop OS by making elementary OS applications available. And I've already made that modification and change. If you'd like to see a video on how to do that, let me know. I can make a video on how to do that. But other than that, a lot of the software is not going to be available. So let's look through some of the stuff that I use here. Some of them you'll find are better. Celluloid I use for watching my videos. VLC is available, but Windows Media Player and iTunes are not. So if you're used to those programs, you're going to have to replace them. Now for videos I use Celluloid, for music I use Rhythmbox. Uh, there's a lot of them available for Linux though, you don't have to use those. Instead of Google Calendar, I have this calendar application. It syncs with my Nextcloud. Now, this is my this is my Linux guy user. It's not my personal user, but I really like this. Uh, I love the Nextcloud integration with it, and it's just like iCal. CAD software. So, you're not going to be running much of any brand name CAD software in Linux, but that doesn't mean that there's not good options. So, Matter Control is pretty decent. Cura is decent. Both of these are really good slicers that you should be aware of. MeshLab is available. It's open source. OpenSCAD is available. There's a few others available that are not on this user. There's FreeCAD. FreeCAD is a really nice piece of software and probably the one that I use the most for creating three-dimensional objects. So that, that's my CAD software. I've got a Commodore folder because these are my Commodore emulators. I've got Commodore 128, Commodore 64, Commodore PET to emulate all of my old Commodore stuff. These do run on other platforms, but I think they run better on Linux. Right, a simple basic program there. What else we got? So content creation. This is a big one for a lot of people. Now, there's a lot of things available for content creation. I'll just name a few that I use that are available right here, but there's, there's a lot of stuff you can get into with content creation. Audacity. If you've got to do some basic audio editing, you probably all know Audacity. Audacity is a great tool. It's not the only one available. If you want something more complicated, there's Ardor, which is a MIDI and audio sequencer, and it's excellent. For me, I mainly stick to Audacity because it's lightweight and fast. I don't have to do a lot of complicated audio editing, but it is available to me, and it, it does a good job. I am a musician, so I have used Ardor in the past. I recommend it if you're really looking at some music production in Linux. You will need to learn how Jack works, though, if you're going to do that. Another one is Darktable. This is like PhotoRec for Photoshop. This lets you work on a photograph and make it look really, really nice. GIMP, or GNU Image Manipulation Program. This is your friend to replace Photoshop. This is available on all major platforms. I use it on Windows and Mac OS on the rare occasions that I have to use them because I've actually grown to like GIMP a whole lot more than Photoshop. It does have a learning curve. It does not work exactly the same, but GIMP has come a long way. If you haven't looked at GIMP in a long time, GIMP 2.10, it looks and feels just like Photoshop. So here it is. Definitely something you should look at. Definitely something that can replace Photoshop for probably 95% of Photoshop users. And if you're pirating Photoshop, get rid of it. Just get GIMP and do the same work and legally for free. Inkscape, this is your vector image program. 
Inkscape is not as polished as GIMP, but its functionality is excellent. So if you don't know what vector images are, basically, if I make this spiral here, I can effectively scale it as much as I want because there's a, an algorithm that makes you able to scale them indefinitely. You can make them very, very big. And Inkscape is your program for that. So if you're designing a logo or something like that, Inkscape is the place to be. Finally, the last content creation tool I want to mention is Caden Live. This is what I do all my video editing on. I used to be a Blender video editor, and Blender is awesome. You should check out Blender for 3D animation and 3D film production. Caden Live, however, is probably going to work for most people's nonlinear video production. You can do it in Blender, and if you'd like to see how to do it in Blender, I can do videos on that. I'm already planning to do Caden Live videos and how you can use Caden Live to produce decent YouTube videos and pretty quickly. But Caden Live is definitely one to look at. It is available for Windows, it works very well on Windows. It's technically available for the Mac, but it requires compilation, and even after trying to compile it on a Mac, I haven't gotten Caden Live to work. If someone has successfully done this and wants to share it, uh, let me know. I, I'd be happy to point people to your video. Games. So there's a bunch of games available for Linux, a bunch of native games, a bunch of emulators, including Dolphin, which you're probably familiar with, or DOSBox. Maybe one you're not so familiar with is this one. This is an Amiga emulator. I can play Amiga games on here. The thing that I want to share the most is Lutris. Now, if you're new to the Linux world, Lutris will probably be something you haven't heard of before, but Lutris is basically a game manager that lets you play all sorts of different games. So I'll click this. This pops up the first time you open Lutris. And Lutris can run Steam games, Linux games, Wine games, and it actually has more stuff. You can download these plugins for it to let it manage all of these games and even run the emulators right in here if you have emulation going on. Or if you have old DOS games you want to run through DOSBox or things like that, which I, I do. The nice thing is, is that they all appear here and you can get artwork for them and just click play. It'll track your playtime kind of like Steam does, but it's a very lightweight program. One of the best things is, is if you're going to install GOG games in Linux, Lutris makes it real easy to do. It also makes it real easy to install Windows games that don't have a Linux version, especially older ones. Steam is also available, so if you're interested in Steam, you can just install Steam from the Pop Shop if you're on Pop OS. And Steam is very well supported in Linux. If you'd like to see more gaming videos, let me know. I'd be happy to do some of those too. All right, let's look at Office. I use GNU Cash for banking stuff. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's nice accounting software. It's nice for managing a budget. So if you're interested in managing a monthly budget, check out GNU Cash. GNU Cash is available on all platforms too, so you don't need Linux to try this out. Focus Writer. I use Focus Writer for writing scripts. Basically what Focus Writer does is this. When you open it, it gives you a piece of paper on a desk and it takes all your other distractions away from you so you can focus on the work at hand. Then if you mouse up top here, you get all of your settings and it saves in the same format that LibreOffice uses. Gnote is a simple note-taking app. I use that a fair bit. I use Geary for a lot of email stuff. However, recently I've been switching over to Evolution. Evolution is more fully featured, having a calendar and things right inside of it. It's nice. I don't know which one I like better, but what I will say is Evolution is more like Microsoft Outlook. Geary is more like Apple Mail. So if your workflows are one, more like one or the other, you should pick one of these accordingly. LibreOffice is a great office suite. I use it a whole lot. I use it mostly, actually, I think, but it's not the only one I use. I use it mostly for my personal stuff, but only Office I use when I need compatibility with other people. Only Office has very good compatibility with Microsoft Office, and I would argue can replace Microsoft Office for most people. Finally, Scribus. Scribus is professional publishing software, so if you're making a book or flyers or things of this nature, Scribus is for you. It's a lot like Adobe InDesign for those of you who are looking for a comparison. Programming. So, programming, I'm not going to go into a lot of these. These are available on other platforms. Microsoft Visual Studio is available through a flat plaque. I have RStudio and R installed. Glade is for developing graphical interfaces for Linux. And Juda is kind of like an IDE. It has all the stuff you need to build a Linux app in C. It actually has Glade built into it. 
So Anjuna is great. Atom is a text editor. I use Atom probably the most out of all of these tools. DBeaver is a database management tool for managing SQL databases, MySQL. I use DBeaver for web development. Finally, the last one I want to show is this one called OBS right here. I'm not going to leave it open because you're going to get like a crazy weird look at what's going on, but that's actually what's recording our video right now. It's capable of doing streaming. It's capable of recording your screen like you're seeing right now. It's even capable of recording video games in Linux, and if you ever see video game footage on my channel, it will have been recorded using OBS. OBS is available also on Mac and Windows. Definitely one to try, even if you're not planning to switch to Linux. If you want to record video game footage, OBS is free, so you don't have to download fraps and shell out a ton of money to record your videos. This is probably the biggest hurdle for most people switching to Linux, is learning the new software. But I think it's well worth the time because you will end up saving a whole lot of money in the long run and your computer will be free, as in freedom, so you, you won't be stuck with the workflows and the updates and everything that Microsoft or Apple give you in their operating systems. You'll be in control now in Linux. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to follow us on Library. Send us a tip if you feel so inclined and we'll see you in the next one.